Hello everybody, I am Dr. Manish Pathak, Senior Transplant Anesthetist and Intensivist at Sayadri Hospital. Uh, today I am going to answer a few of the questions which are generally asked for the awareness among the medical fraternity. The first question is uh, the key role of anesthesiologist in organ harvesting and transplant surgery. Well, in case of organ harvesting, uh, the cadaver donor, when you call cadaver donor, the patient is brain dead, patient is requiring multiple organ supports like blood pressure support, ventilator support. Maintaining this patient's vital and uh, maintaining their electrolyte balance like sodium, potassium and blood sugars became vital uh, for the intensivist as well as the anesthesiologist in the operation theatre. These patients are not generally a normal patients. Uh, the patient's brain is dead and everything is worked on the artificial support which we are giving. So it becomes very, very critical to let all the organs function normally while the patient is being shifted to operation theatre until the organs are harvested. While the transplant surgeries is totally different ballgame compared to the normal surgeries where you have uh, multiple problems when patient is very sick and patient needs emergency surgery and if the transplant is not done, then patient have a high risk of mortality. Uh, coming to your next question, when there is whether there is a difference between uh, anesthesia for normal surgeries and transplant surgeries, yes, there is a huge difference. Uh, while thinking of uh, normal surgeries, you have pre-planned elective surgical procedures and you have a plan for anesthesia. Well, when you think of transplantation surgeries, it is either elective or emergency where patients might be prepared or might not be prepared. And you have to do some routine blood investigation to see whether the patient can tolerate surgeries or not. Talking especially about the liver transplantation, patients are coagulopathic, very low platelet counts and patient tends to bleed before and during surgeries, which might be life-threatening many a times. So it becomes a totally different ballgame when you think of anesthesia for transplantation surgeries, whatever transplant like heart, lungs, liver, kidney, pancreas, it becomes too meticulous from the anesthesiologist's point of view to handle this patient more carefully. When talking about the post anesthesia effect and post op complications, uh, especially about the liver transplantation, it depends upon the surgical duration, it depends upon the surgical techniques and intra op hemodynamic unstability the patient have. The patient tend to be coagulopathic, patient might start bleeding post operatively, patient had chances of infection in the first 48 hours if the patients are quite sick operatively the patient might require ventilator for uh, four hours to one day depending upon uh, the intraoperative uh, developments like uh, hemodynamic instability ventilator requirement how much blood you have transfused how much plasma you have transfused to this patient so uh, there are known complications of this transplant surgeries post-operatively, but being expertise in this field, you can definitely, and over a period of time, we also have decreased these complications and we tend to send a patient as soon as home. To be very frank, our patient have gone home on day five and day six when the surgery has went off smooth and we avoid the maximum number of blood perfusions. So when you talk about liver transplantation with patients with heart disease or chronic kidney disease, so I talk about heart disease, we have a meticulous planning preoperatively to see whether the patient's heart is functioning good or not. Uh, we do a dobutamine stress echo to see the uh, effective pumping of heart and see the ischemia in the heart uh, by giving dobutamine because our patients are quite sick and they can't tolerate a stress test. If the dobutamine echo uh, is warranting us something, then we go for a coronary angiography and uh, then we treat the patient according to that and let the patient wait for some days and then proceed with transplant surgeries. There have been reported some cases and we also have done one patient with the CABG and liver transplantation as a combined surgery where uh, you give a new lease of life for the heart as well as the liver and uh, you plan it according to a discussion with the cardiac surgeons and cardiologists. So the cardiac risk is minimized preoperatively depending upon the sickness of the patient. Now suppose patient have a very severe heart disease in some situation, the mortality, intraoperative and postoperative complications uh, increase proportionally in this patient. So you have to take utmost care so that patient heart doesn't suffer more. Now talking about the chronic kidney disease, the patient with chronic kidney disease 
uh, will require a kidney transplant in some time of their life. Now, if that is planned with the other transplant like heart, lung or liver, we prefer doing a combined transplant. If suppose you are not opting for a combined transplant, then the mortality increases many fold when you are doing an isolated liver transplant. So we offer such patients a combined kidney plus liver or combined kidney plus other transplantation in such situations. Uh, your next question about the regulatory policies that are stringent uh, for the organ transplantation. Very frankly, I'm telling you, it's not stringent. They are strict. So in this situation, over a period of years of time, these are being studied regularly to make some policies where transplantation program will run smoothly. You might have heard some cases of organ trafficking and uh, other uh, problems which people are with the government or with the uh, Policies have been suffered because of this uh, rules and regulation. But yes, they are in place to make this transplant program smooth without any hassles. So definitely they are strict. But if cleanly and neatly followed, uh, nobody should have a problem in uh, going for a committee or a hospital policies to be regulated according to the rules and regulations and the transplant program in our institute is being run for last four hours following these policies and we are happy with that. Uh, talking about the state of organ transplantation in our country, we have two programs being run in the country. One is living donor liver transplant or living donor transplant and other is cadaver transplant. If you go from south to north, uh, south we have more of a cadaver based program and in north we have a living donor program very well established over a period of year. The reason behind this is we still lack some awareness about organ donation in cadavers among the common people. Over a period of time, in spite of our NGOs, our uh, social medias, our doctors and the non-medical or paramedical staff educating the people or layman about this cadaver organ donation regularly and very effectively, still I feel that there is some lack of knowledge among the laymans and common people about this cadaver organ donation, what exactly is cadaver, whether which organs can be donated, what is the process for, to be followed behind that, what are the medical legal uh, rules to be followed behind that and I still feel that there is some more efforts and knowledge need to be implemented among the common people so that this organ donation program will be uh, flourishing might be in some years that will be a dream come true where lakhs and lakhs of patients who are awaiting organs will be benefited by cadaver organs. Uh, coming to the end, I'll uh, just want to give a message to my all colleagues, uh, doctors here like uh, transplant program is not a difficult program to be set up. We at Sayadri Hospital have been running this transplant program for almost four years that we have done 200 transplant till now. And uh, following the rules and regulations, what we want here is that the maximum number of patients who are waiting for organ should get benefited by cadaver organ program or a living organ program. And we are doing a good numbers of living organ donor programs also for kidney and liver here. And uh, the patient who needs transplantation should be referred to a transplant program center as soon as possible without uh, wasting more time. If the patient comes in time to a transplant team, then the best possible benefit can be uh, followed or forwarded to the patient and patient will get a new lease of life. So that is the reason why we want to run a program in a tier 2, tier 3 city where a patient if not able to come to a big city, we can go there, give them benefit of transplantation and get them back to their normal life. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.